in front of him, no congregation to listen to. And, and, and his father reprimanded his son and said, Son, don't you know that we don't laugh in church during Lent? And the little boy asked, Why, Dad? Why, why can't we laugh? His father said, Because Lent is a time when we remember that Jesus died for us. Is Jesus dead, inquired the son? No, answered the father. Jesus died, but he didn't stay dead. He rose from the grave and is living in you and me right now. And the little boy thought for a moment and he said, You know, I think, uh, I think, I think it must have been Jesus alive in me that made me laugh. The traditions of Lent we are most familiar with, though, is no laughing matter. During the season of reflection, this season of reflection and repentance, words like somber and sacrificial and silent solitude and suffering is the vocabulary that we are, that describes us, help us describe the 40 days that are ahead of us. The traditions of Lent more often reflect the doom and gloom expressed by the great poet Isaiah as he writes in, in 2 Joel, verses 1 and 2. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming and it's near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and dark, thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. There never has, there, like there has never been from, from of old, nor will there be again after them in the ages to come. You know, our response to these traditions is to do something that at least symbolically connects us to what the message Joel gives us. We deny ourselves some simple pleasures and try to emulate and participate in some symbolic way the lonely walk of our Lord on his way to the cross. With prayer and meditation and music, we steel ourselves for the battle ahead against the temptations we hope to overcome and close the spiritual gap between ourselves and Jesus. At the conclusion of the service, we're going to place on our foreheads a cross of ash in much the same way the ancients prepared for the battle that lies ahead of us as we go forth and confront the enemy that is our sin. That's how many of us experience Lent today. But it actually didn't start that way. Originally, Christians integrated the trials Jesus went through, the death he experienced on the cross, along with Jesus' rising from the dead in a one-day event. The early church called this the Christian Pascha or Easter, as we know it today, and this one-day event that was, was based originally on the Jewish Passover. It's a little complicated how Easter eventually was moved to Sunday and the Passover meal was shifted to uh, a different time, back to Thursday, but it's now part of our church tradition, and that's the way we, we expect it and anticipate it. The Thursday Passover meal, though, was named Monday, Monday Thursday, which comes from the Latin word for commandment. This is the commandment found in John's Gospel, where it tells us in the 13th chapter, on his last night, before his betrayal and arrest, Jesus washed the feet of his disciples and then gave them a new commandment to love one another as he had loved them. This new tradition took root in the early church where Thursday evening Christians celebrated our version of the Passover where we took time to reflect about where you, are, where you stand in relationship with the cross and with each other through meditation in preparation for a celebration on Sunday morning. But listen, it used to be one day had now stretched to about 40 hours, this new tradition. And the reason, reason things changed and Lent was extended to now 40 days was due in part to Christianity becoming part of the mainstream. When the Roman government accepted Christianity, there was no longer a feeling of, of persecution upon the heads of everybody. And when they didn't feel the pressure of persecution, people started to stray away from their faith. Kind of sounds a lot like what happens to us when at times, when things are going good, when times are going well, we think we don't need God. But when a calamity shakes our foundations, we remember there is hope found in Jesus. I believe with the best of intentions, the church fathers try to get people to consistently depend on God instead of just living in the moment. So they stretch Monday, Thursday 
as a time of remembrance for what happened to Jesus on the cross and he died for our sins. And the way we practice Lent is similar to the trials Jesus went through for the 40 days he spent in the desert and has echoes way back to when Moses and the Israelites spent 40 years in the desert. Today we go without during Lent in an act of self-denial that helps us remember. But what is missing is even, and even more importantly, is to move ourselves closer to the model of living the way Jesus taught us to love one another as he loves us. It's our sins that are getting in the way of that model. It's our sins that get in the way of our living out the commandment Jesus gave us. So that's what we want to give up tonight. We want to give up so that we can actually give more of God's love to one another. For example, giving up hatred and anger that is brought on by our pride is a sin that we need to practice self-denial and let go of. Fasting from a gossiping tongue or wandering eyes is going to do more for you than managing your diet in the next 40 days. 40 days of fasting from sin is a powerful way to facilitate change and to be more like the one who died for you and I. Listen to what the prophet Joel tells us. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. Joel's call for us to return to the Lord is, a, is the perfect example of the meaning of the word repent, which of course means to abandon sin and turn around, return to the Lord. Earlier we read eight principles that when lived out, they help us return to the Lord and they help us experience, as the little boy said when he found joy in his father's church, Jesus who is alive in us. When Jesus is alive in us, Lent them is both solemn and joy-filled, terrible and triumphant, and our self-denial opens up the opportunity to generously share God's love as we are commanded to. Let's pray. Holy Father, so thankful that you brought us together tonight. So thankful for the opportunity that we might celebrate a meal that we're about to enjoy together. We're so thankful to call ourselves Christians who are no longer persecuted but are struggling with things of this world that are weighing us down even more than the, than the sword that hang over the heads of those who are struggling just to survive. Ours is maybe even a more difficult battle to retain our faith because we're left on our own. And so we need you, Father. We need to depend on you and love you and come close to you that we might know you and be able to love others. In the name of Jesus, amen. On the night before Jesus was crucified, he gathered his disciples together in a Passover meal. And these elements that are before us now were used to express specific things, certain things that Jesus wanted to communicate and that we might never forget. Let me tell you the story once again. <clears throat> 